students today we're going to look at subtopic 5.3 for chapter 5 for two science water and pollution okay the first idea here we want to look at how do we obtain water naturally so what are the natural resources of water as you all know the natural resources of water will be from rain water from spring, sea, river, pond, and so many other resources that we have. When we collect water from natural resources such as the river mainly, we realize that these waters are not clean and cannot be directly used for consumption such as drinking. The reason is this water will contain impurities. Impurities are unwanted particles in the water. It can be microorganisms and dissolved chemicals. And this water cannot be directly used by us because of the microorganisms, the bacteria, the chemicals which can give us any harmful effect. So what we will do is that once we have collected this water system, especially from the river, we will do purification to this water system. The common four methods that we always do is boiling, which we normally do at home. We boil the tap water, the water to drink. Distillation, this is done also in the lab and also in industry. Distillation, chlorination, uh, sorry, filtration, this is filtration, we filter and chlorination. We add the chemical chlorine into water. So these are the four common methods. Okay, what is boiling? As we all know, boiling is a method used at home where we boil the water for drinking because as we boil, most of the microorganisms are killed. So boiling is to kill microorganisms. As we boil at 100 degrees Celsius, most of the microorganisms are killed, so it can be used. And the second method here is filtration. As we filter water through a filter machine, a filter that we prepare in the school, we will remove most of the larger particles and it will be filtered out. The only disadvantage when we do filter here is that if it's a chemical dissolved in the water, then that chemical is not removed yet. We are only able to remove particles through the filtration system if the particles are larger than the fine pores of the filter, then the particles are filtered away, they will become residue and this is the filtered water. I repeat again, filtration can only remove particles that cannot go through the tiny pores of the filter. So filtrations can still have the dissolved chemical in the water. Chlorination found to be very good because chlorination, as we add chlorine to the water, it will kill all the microorganisms. Chlorine is able to kill all the microorganisms in any form of water. That's why if you go to swimming pool, if you remember, you will add chlorine in the swimming pool water. And next is distillation. This is one of the most expensive method to be carried out as you do here what happened here when you boil water at its boiling point the water vapor will come out the steam pure h2o will come out it will go through Leibniz condenser where it will go through condensation the steam vapor turns back to water and we have collected pure distilled water so this is a method where we can have any form of solution we boil it at 100 degrees Celsius, we collect the steam H2O and it goes through a condensation and we have collected pure water. This is called distilled water, safe to drink. The next other alternative methods used around the world is to recycle the water. Then they can collect water from fog. This can be done at cold area or high humidity in the air or at a higher land area. Then collecting water from the sea, reverse osmosis method. The recycling method is done by countries where they don't have enough resources like river. Malaysia, we don't really do this. Look at it here, the water from the shower, tap, the water that we bathe, everything will be going back to a septic tank. 
the water will be recycled to certain process of chemical processes and can be used again for domestic usage at house, mopping, flushing the toilet bowl, the toilet laundry also can be used and gardening. So this is recycling. Another method is collecting water from the fog. What they will do here is that this is a tiny net system where as I told you earlier, water will have sorry the air will have humidity as the humidity passed through here the air passed through here all the tiny particle of the water will be trapped here H2O and as they gain their weight they become larger particles they will be falling down and we can be collected it's a slow process but we are still able to collect water the next process is reverse osmosis this is done by countries which they really don't have any source of water Right, they will take the sea water, salt water, and they will filter it through a semi permeable membrane and will get the fresh water. This is a reverse osmosis method done by quite a number of countries where they don't have enough fresh water resources. Then, the water system that we have in Malaysia, the water supply system, very simple. We have water reservoirs, all right, water reservoirs. Then from there, first thing we'll do filtration. This filtration is done to remove all the particles that don't dissolve, the large particles. So the filter will only allow water and very tiny particles to move through it, right? So large particles like branches of tree or leaves, whichever was collected to the from the dam, all be filtered away. After that, by using the help of a pump station, the water will go through an oxidation process where this is done to increase the oxygen level of the water. Why do we need to increase the oxygen level of the water? As we increase the oxygen level of the water, we realize that the smell is removed and the taste of water also change a bit. After the process of oxidation, the water will go through a coagulation and sedimentation process. A coagulation process, if you notice, there is two chemicals added to the water. The first one is the calcium hydroxide, where the calcium hydroxide, once added to water, is called slick lime. This is to reduce acidity of water. I think all of us must know that we should not drink a lot of acid water, or the water should not have a lot of higher level of acidity. Calcium hydroxide, slick lime, is added to reduce the acidity of water, so that the water that we drink will not have higher level of acidity. The next most important stuff is the alum. The alum is added, aluminum oxide is added, where this is to make sure that all the tiny particles that came through the filter, the first filter level, remember the first filter as they filter through here, there are still tiny particles which are able to move through the filter, such as small tiny mud particles. So as you add alum to the water, all will stick together and they will become a larger particle and they will form sedimentation. So they become heavier, they settle down. So easier to remove them. See sedimentation, suspended particles deposit at the bottom. So we can remove them easily. And finally, the water will go to another filtration method. This time we use so many types of filters to remove any remaining suspended particles. Right? Then the final thing, the water will go through chlorination and fluoridation. I will add fluorine and chlorine. Chlorine, as we learned earlier, will kill all form of microorganisms. So the water that we get, the tap water from our water tank, should not have any form of microorganism. And fluoride is added. This is just to improve the our tooth system, so to prevent tooth decay. And finally, the water will be sent to the storage tank near our housing area and later come to our water tank to the house. So as I repeat again, the water treatment system in Malaysia will start with filtration followed by oxidation followed by coagulation and sedimentation and will end at filtration and chlorination and fluoridation. Okay. The last part, we must know how to consume water in a safer manner. 
we must make sure that the water that we obtain is clean and we must know how water pollution occur and how to stop water pollution. Okay, the first idea we realize that water pollution is simple river. The river will be polluted where people will actually block the river with a lot of rubbish as we know in Malaysia. So water pollution, upgrade sewerage systems nationwide, educate people on how to manage rubbish correctly, improve sanitation facilities in rural areas. So we have to teach people to reduce water pollution, especially river pollution. And also we must enforce laws to ensure industrial waste is treated before it is discharged into river. A lot of industry will use water and the waste of water must be treated. They must have a treatment plant in their factories, in their area of their industrial area. They must do a proper treatment and then only they can release the water to the river based on environmental quality regulation 2005. And Farmers also must be educated. They should know that most of the time, they must or all the time, they must use biodegradable fertilizers and pesticides because these chemicals that they use will later enter the water system and they will dissolve into the river and pollute the river. So if they use biodegradable fertilizers and pesticides, if this can reduce the effect. And oil spill. We know around the world, even in Straits of Malacca, there will be a lot of oil spill. So they must contain the oil spill by using the National Oil Spill Contingency Plan and improve the, uh, or watch out for the oil spill with the air police in it. Right? And finally, these are certain tips. How to save water. I think as a student, you all should know that we need to save water to reduce the amount of water using and also to make sure that we have a sustainable, clean water. Thank you, students.